Awesome. Mike's Daily Podcast. And I would do anything for podcasting. I'd even podcast on my head. Mike's Daily Podcast. Aw, meatloaf's gone. So sad about that. He had a great voice. He had no hat on. Generally, he would get up on stage and sing his lungs out. It was written by Jim Steinem, who's also no longer about two great singers. Mike's Daily Podcast. Well, Meatloaf was mainly the singer Jim Steinem, the piano player and producer. And Mike's wrote a bunch Daily of big hits podcast. that Meatloaf then yeah. took, took to the sky, took to the top of the charts. Well, and then Steinem also wrote Making Love Out of Nothing at All for Air Supply, Celine Dion's song, oh, what was that? It's All Coming Back to Me Now. That was the name of the song. And of course, Total Eclipse of the Heart with Bonnie Tyler. There was a point where, let's see, Total Eclipse of the Heart and Making Love Out of Nothing at All were both at number one. And there was some other song he had that was also at close to number one at that point so he like ruled the charts in the early 80s at one point Jim Steinem okay and he and he passed away I think it was last year Meatloaf did not get his name from a football coach or PE teacher or something like that I heard that story today I think that's wrong because I saw an interview with Meatloaf and Dan Rather and Meatloaf said first off my name should be two Words Meat's my first name. Loaf is my last name. And so people should call me Meat, not Meat Loaf. And he said to Dan Rather that the reason why he got that name was because his dad was really mean, a bully. And when Meat Loaf was born as a little baby, he was kind of pinkish looking like a Meat Loaf. And here's today's podcast picture. And I believe that is where it came from. You can check the interview with Dan Rather on YouTube. That's where I went to it. The podcast picture is not of Meatloaf. No, I think we'll go with a sunset, a recent sunset from Fremont. We've been getting some amazing sunsets in Fremont, but we are at Cafe Anyway right now. Podcast Valley Mont, the last place on earth. All the people hanging out with us today on a Friday, kind of a party day. We've been, my lovely lady friend and I have been watching Ugly Delicious, fantastic show talking about foods, all kinds of foods. The late great Basil the Boxer, he loved food. He loved, you know what though? He was also a very aware dog. Like if, if my lovely lady friend made a noise like, like, like a you know like a, a surprise or something like ah if she was watching something that scared her he'd be very concerned are you okay what's going on he's very concerned like everybody okay and that's just the nature i think of a lot of dogs but that was really wonderful like great pals the boxer there okay so we've been hearing a lot a lot oh and louis anderson also passed away he was the host of family feud for a while and he was on that TV show Baskets and did a lot of stand-up. I remember his stand-up. Every time I turned on the TV, there'd be his stand-up. He'd be standing up, doing his comedy. Okay. You know who kind of reminds me of him is Jim Gaffigan. Kind of picked some of... It kind of carries the mantle, the Louis Anderson mantle, but... Any financial advisor will tell you to always invest above the inflation rate. But what does that mean? According to the International Monetary Fund, inflation is the rate of increase in prices over a given period of time. It is typically a broad measure of prices, such as the increase in the cost of living in a country, but it also is used to calculate more specific goods, such as food or services. Like getting her hair cut Ha 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 Can't remember the last time that happened Because I haven't had hair Since my teens basically It is often described this way As time goes on and inflation increases A person's buying power becomes less 
with the same amount of money. Is inflation problematic? Yes, it is the bane of every business woman, man, and other, and salary earner. The root cause of rising costs and other financial woes. It can have a very, very real effect on how you cope with your day-to-day expenses. There are five ways to financially prepare for rising prices. Learn the art of investing. Investments are among the best ways to insulate your life savings from the effects of inflation. By taking the plunge and putting your money in a diverse portfolio of stocks and bonds, you can grow your personal worth more quickly than if your money was idly sitting in a bank account. This according to comparehero.my. Yes, dot my. What? You've never heard of a dot my? Everything is dot com? Yes. That is a bit odd. But there are these other ending domain names. Now. Uh, so, there is also... The earlier you start investing, the better because you have a longer time horizon. And because the returns from investing generally magnify over time. They're just saying that time is an investor's best friend. Look for fixed rates. When it comes to inflation, time tends to be your biggest enemy. As prices grow across the board, so too do the regular dues and fees that come with most transactions. A fixed interest rate prevents your regular payments from ballooning along with inflation by keeping your interest proportional to your actual savings. You can also help fight inflation by buying a home and by that an actual house built on a plot of land in your name owning a property means that you will have a concrete asset you can pass down to your descendants or use for a different purpose later down the line if you can't afford to buy property with cash as we go outside a cafe anyway we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere podcast or Valley Mont you can shop around for a home loan at terms that agree with your current budget. It, so real estate investments are often seen as inflation hedge investments because they are assets that are expected to increase or maintain value over a period of time. Now that opens up a whole box of everything else when it comes to buying a house because when you buy a house, well now you have a house. And that means all the problems. Water heater exploding. The heater not working, which happened to me in the coldest part of the winter last year. All that stuff you're responsible for. Painting the house. If a a comet uh, meteorite falls through the top of your roof, you're responsible for that. The leaks in your house. You're responsible for everything. At least when you rent, you can tell your landlord to do that. But of course, then your landlord's increasing your rent. But then again, you don't have... See, it's all give and take, right? That's what my dad would tell me. Live thriftly is probably the best lesson out of all of this from comparehero.my. Mine. Mine. As inflation often has an immediate effect on prices, one no-brainer solution you can try is minimizing your spending. Keeping frivolous spending to a minimum. Save on gas by carpooling Or take public transportation Or even working from home Be more strategic about how you use your credit card Keeping an eye out for low APRs Exclusive discounts And helpful rewards programs You can't prevent inflation But you can improve on how you manage it Manage it The good news is that financial literacy Is the gift that keeps on giving You can better prepare consumers for any future upheavals in the financial market. And remember to have good spending habits. And good habits in general. Just don't buy everything that you see. Oh, that's a nice shirt. Although, if you... As long as you don't throw out a bunch of stuff Buy stuff and just throw out stuff And not, you know All of your investments just get thrown in the trash That's ridiculous But if you buy something and then you take forever To get rid of it 
like just about every shirt I own I've had forever and that probably would not be the best thing for me in the dating pool I may look a little like uh, uh, something out of a thrift store speaking of thrifty thriftily but that's another thing thrift stores my mom did that a lot went to thrift stores and what's so funny is when you look at 19 early 1980s clothing and Ocean Pacific everybody had to have an OP OP label on their shirt and those shirts look so ugly to me now it's like why did we go so crazy I mean people would you'd be judged and this is the same I'm sure for kids in school today it's always it's been the, the same for kids at any era at any time at any epoch that they've been judged by what they wear and my mom would buy stuff from the thrift store and she'd go oh yeah you've got an OP shirt OP stands for other people's <laughs> mom but true the stupid trends the stupid fads we pursue the fashions it's all stupid and subjective and who cares what people think be smart with your clothing be smart with your spending I think we spend the most ridiculous amount on clothes and then food that we buy that's bad for us because we bought it from a restaurant that's she she foo foo and uses a lot of butter that we don't need in our diet that makes us fat these are all just thoughts in my head <laughs> but you know there's a kernel of truth in all that I mean they do say just look up anywhere eating out you are hurting your diet because they put a lot of extra stuff in there you don't know about oil whatever cook at home that's an another great way to save money couple deliver a baby at roadside as ambulance tells them help won't come for six or seven hours wow this was uh, Luke Rawlings delivered his baby at the side of a road after mom Gemma went into labor on the way to the hospital this story from earlier this week this couple delivered their baby in the back of their car they were miles from a hospital that's one way to save money <laughs> that costs a lot of money when you go to the hospital to deliver a baby but hey it's also probably the smart way because complications can happen you need a doctor around well the dad said the missus was at home she was having what she thought um there were labor pains and anytime she gets sort of a pain she tends to put it off as something else she'd been in pain for about two days and the pains were coming closer and closer the hospital said sounds very much sounds like you're going into labor pack your bag head to the hospital and there you go that story from the what do you call it whales online ah whales online is that I guess that is the country of Wales thank you England and over there employers like hot desking because it costs less oh yeah speaking of working from home workers find it alienating and impersonal what the divide says about the future of the office Having to book a random desk each time can remove part of the joy and certainty of coming into the office. Sitting near colleagues you like or knowing where certain bosses sit. Yeah, when I go into work, I got an office because I'm a manager now. And a, an operations manager and I have an office and I go there and that's fine. But I guess there's this hot desking, not having your own desk. And it's a hybrid work world. So some employers are doing that. Employees don't love it. It's a, you have to book a random desk each time an employee works in the office. Yikes. It's gained mo mainstream popularity during COVID-19. Spurred to a large extent by public health requirements on social distancing. Wow. That came from the Globe and Mail. And that, I believe, is also from England. So, there you go. Okay. 
Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, mm, Mont. The last place on earth. Look who's here. Oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I apologize. If you looked at the blog, I said, coming up today is Madame Rudebega, Valentino, Bison, Bentley. That was yesterday. Sorry, they're not here today. They've been banned. Look who's here. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's Jolly Too Hard. Good job, Supervisor. Yeah, that was a misprint on your website, Mike Matthews. Yes, and speaking of which, you can see all the past podcast pictures at my website, mikesdailypodcast.com. And you can chime in about anything we covered today, 336MM Daily. 3 plus 3 equals 6MM as the Mike Matthews Daily. As in what this podcast has been for a couple of days, we've been pretty good. Look who else is here right now. Right now. Hello there, Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know what I... I thought you guys were banned. What is happening? Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Yeah, now we've really confused the listener. <laughs> That's the John Deere, the engineer, chuckling. Well, look, it's a big party. We're all here. We're all social distancing and hot desking. We're, we're not hot boxing, but we are saying goodbye. Next show, it'll be the wonderful Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Thank you for listening. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do oh, that. Oh, and that was episode 2371. 2372, rather. 2372. Yeah, 2372. Thank you. Goodbye. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.